Hello. Greetings. Hello, everyone. Live from my grandmother's basement, we are Trash People. I am Emily Pineapple. And I'm Forrest, the keeper of the canon. And we are celebrating uh, a Parnan on Charla today. Yes. Super excited. We just learned that she will be on Planet Stem Live uh, tonight. So I'm really excited to get to share with you some of the awesome stuff we found about her and this cat who is just staying just, just right out of frame, just chilling, just chilling right out of frame. Hello, friends. Hello, Hello Clyde Coconut. Hi, Hello, the Arhus guy. guy. Hello, Hi, Key to the I L E Kyle. I like how you put Kyle like afterwards so that I could actually say Kyle instead of Katola T. Uh, <laughs> And oh, hi, Redactyl. And I'm glad that we get to see. And purple hat, <laughs> Tiger, Tiger Bates. Bates. I'm glad that Space Forces, Chris Gethard, and Space Forces, Aparna and Charla get to reunite together. I'm very excited. Uh, we're going to see the woman uh, who shares a voice with and uh, a show with and Joe a show with Joe Firestone. I, I truly believe that they have they have the same voice, uh, a sim same same. Similar energy. Similar energy. Not same energy, but similar energies. The kind of energy where like they're like I feel like they're like my soft spoken badass aunt, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Big ant energy. It's big ant energy. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I like that description a lot. <laughs> like I feel like I would I would a child would one hundred percent be safe with them. Like I could leave any child with them. Like they're just like kind ladies. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, yes. You can no, leave a child. <laughs> Pardon, but... Charla. You could just leave a child with her. <laughs> I hate that that has to be specified. <laughs> um. So yeah. So if you have a child to leave somewhere, uh, don't leave it with a Parna. There are hospitals and fire stations for that. Um. But it's more for where you leave a baby. Is that not what I said? You said leave a child. A child? <laughs> like leaving a five-year-old at a fire station? Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Like a 12-year-old. Just like, here you go. You live in this fire station now. I mean, to be perfectly honest, if you really need to surrender a child. To clarify, I don't know, <laughs> I don't actually know if you can leave a baby at a fire station. You Move. can. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's a safe uh, baby drop site. I was near going us off of at movies. the fire station. Yeah. Like the Mario Brothers movie. No, it looks like a mailbox. Truly, it's right next to this thing where you can like it looks like the uh the library thing, you know, where you pull it down and you put in a book to return a book. That's what it looks like, but over it it's like safe baby drop sites. <laughs> like Kyle, you put the baby. Uh, Kyle does have an important clarification. Yes. You can leave them anywhere. <laughs> You can. This is true. Perhaps uh, shouldn't. Perhaps shouldn't. The approved places to leave your child you don't want. Is hospital, the fire station, fire the station hospital. Aparna Nancharla, Joe Firestone. Yes. Oh, dude, Joe Rumroll would be so chill with a kid, too. I like how how this has become <laughs> the topic. Is just, which comedians would you leave your children with? Which comedian would you leave a child with? Uh, go! Um, I'm definitely going to say, I don't know if I would leave my child with Chris Gethard. I would. Like, I think the child would be safe. Like, the child wouldn't get into it. It would depend on the child, though. Because if my child was going to, like, if a child was determined, I think that they could easily trick Chris into most things. His baby did beat him up, as you pointed out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, like if I have a good kid who, like, wants adults to like them, then I would leave them with Chris Gethard. But if my kid was a Hellraiser, I don't know about that. That's fair. That's fair. I'd leave them with Riley for sure. But maybe we should uh, look at the bio of one yeah, of those, one of those, uh, one of those comedians you said you'd leave your kid with. Oh, hey, Sarasota. Oh, hey, Purple Hat. Hey, Purple Hat. Let's learn a little bit more about Aparna and Charla. Aparna and Charla is a comedian and general silly billy. You see, you would leave a child with a silly billy. Her sense of humor is dry, existential, and absurd, with notes of uncalled for whimsy. I feel like I want that. I need to write that down so that whenever anyone asks what kind of comedy I like, yeah. I can just read yeah. <laughs> I like dry, <laughs> existential, absurd things with notes of uncalled for whimsy. It must be uncalled for. 
Think a wine you didn't order. You can oh, watch that's it. That's funny. Right? She should go into comedy. That's how really good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can watch Oparna as Grace, the belabored HR rep on the Comedy Central show Corporate. Or hear her as the voice of Hollyhock on Bojack Horseman. Oh, it's my favorite I love show. Love her as Hollyhock. Favorite character, like favorite yeah. relationship to yeah. watch in the show. She oh. also has a half hour special on the second season of The Stand Ups on Netflix, yeah. as well as appearances on Late Night with Stephen Colbert on CBS and Two Dope Queens on yeah. HBO. Other acting credits include A Simple Favor, Crashing, High Maintenance, Master of None, and Inside Amy Schumer. Aparna was also named one of the 50th funny, 50th, 50 funniest people right now by Rolling Stone. <laughs> was she the 50th of those people? No. If I was the 50th, I would definitely say so. Oh, that would be, I'd yeah. be like, I am the worst yeah. you can be to get on this list. Legitimately, the reason I know she wasn't 50th is because that's not in her bio, because most comedians <laughs> would absolutely highlight that. Um, she also co-hosted the 2018 Women's March Rally in New York City. And in 2019, she was in a Super Bowl commercial with Michael Bublé for <laughs> sparkling water. Nay. Seltzer. I like sparkling water. Nay. Seltzer Bublé. a lot. In 2016, she released her debut <laughs> Sorry, album, just putting it out there on Tignataro's label, Benson Ball Records, and recorded a half hour special for Comedy Central. On Monday nights, she co hosts Butter Boy at Littlefield in Park Slope, or now the internet in your the house. The internet in your home. At 8 p.m. Eastern with Genius Treasures. On your phone. And National Lampoon Radio Hour <gasps> writers and cast members, Joe Firestone and Maeve Higgins. And Gethard's been on it. Butterboy is a really fun show to watch, yeah. um, even Truly. in these uncertain times. <laughs> watch the absurdist web series Womanhood, a parna made with mm -hmm. aforementioned bright light Joe Firestone. for. Did you say bright light? Yeah. I love she that. said aforementioned bright no, bright light Joe Firestone for Refinery29. <laughs> I uh, I love her bio. Her bio is perfect. Dry existential absurdist with a hint of uncalled for whimsy. Yes, I repeated <laughs> I, I, I repeated it from memory. I can do it now. You did it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Allie. Thank you, Allie. And remember, if you just got here, you can leave your children. Oh, with yeah. Aparna Nancharla or Joe Firestone. If you want to leave your children with comedians, we've outlined ones you can do that yes, with safely we, earlier in the show. So not like, not that the child, not that, I don't think any, I don't, no, I wouldn't no. name a comedian well, who I would think intentionally it's, harm no, 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 your no, no, child. No, no, no. It's negligence. It would be negligence or maybe just like well, saying also, something weird around them or also, if they're like, they yell a lot or something. Like I they didn't might specify that I meant the kid would be safe. Oh. Also, that the, uh, that the, the comedian's com mental <laughs> health would be fine. That the comedian could handle being left alone with a child and not go crazy. That's a really, really good point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Carmen Christopher would be very dangerous with kids. But you know why? And this is the same reason pranks? why. Is it because yes. you have the children go do pranks? He would do pranks. He would like, a, I feel like if a child was like, I have an idea of prank. He would be like, let's do it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> like. <laughs> That's fine. That might be amazing. Yeah, That's the yeah, same exactly. reason why I won't leave a kid with Gethard. Exactly. Subway pranks. The kid and, and Carmen, <laughs> the kids and Carmen would go do subway pranks and go immediately viral. I'm kind of okay with that. Wouldn't leave your great? kids with Carmen Christopher. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Everyone will be safe. The world will be a better place. Leave your kids with <laughs> Carmen Christopher. <laughs> but also, a partner in Charlotte. Yeah. If you want your your kids to come back like uh at, like they were fed knowledge. Oh, that wasn't supposed to be up yet. Like they were enriched. If you want your children to return enriched, I feel like leave them with a Harna or Joe Firestone. <laughs> oh my god. What? Oh, prank kids. Prank kids. Annika, you're a genius and you need to go pitch this to Katzenberg while you still yes! can. Yes. Oh my God. While Quibi is still with us, go pitch it to Quibi. <laughs> See? Sarah yes. Sode would watch the hell out of it. Yep. See Quibi? We already got three. Quibi. Three, three. people would watch. Three. Triple your Guaranteed. <laughs> Come on, Quibi. Come on, Quibi. We got this. Uh, and you know what else we got? Uh, this great clip of Aparna. This clip, this first one that we're showing uh, is from Womanhood. Is that correct? 
Are we sharing the be. womanhood clip? Yeah, let's do that one first. Yay! It's womanhood. This is the one with Aparna and guiding light Joe Firestone. Uh, bright light Joe Firestone. Bright line light Joe Firestone. We watched one of these episodes for Joe Firestone's episode. Um, and I they uh, they're so cute together. I want they them to delight. do everything they are a delight together. together. They're a delight. That's why, for some reason, I thought they were dating. Like, I don't know where that got in my head, but this show was why I thought that. Because I'm like, they're so cute. Like, I want to watch them grow old together. <laughs> so here uh, is some of the funniest moments from season two of Womanhood. Was that not perfect? Um, I love the creepy head turns. Oh, Joe, you got a little something. What? Everywhere? You got something here. What? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm showing them. <laughs> what are you showing them? I'm showing them my hairy torso. <laughs> Can you open your deck and like, I'm a little warm. This is warm and hood. I'm warm. <laughs> <laughs> Someone pay them to make a show. Yes. Someone pay them to make another show. Whoa. Yes, she is in the same series as you guys. They're both in Space Force. Controversial. I haven't heard a uh, scene. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> that is my hole. <laughs> Okay, we need a chant. Yeah. To get psyched up. You're right. Okay. Who's, Who's under, under the, the bridge? bridge? <laughs> Who's, Who's under, under the, the bridge? bridge? It's me, the <laughs> troll. <laughs> One, two, three. Who's under the bridge? <laughs> I was trying to use an expression. What's the expression? We came, we saw, we come. <laughs> I've never had sex without a layer of pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love that clip. I love the sense of her energy that you yeah. can really get because she's she's a really versatile actress and I feel like a lot of her roles they play up that she's like she seems like small and calm and like almost like timid or whatever. They play up those parts of her whereas when we get to see her perform, yeah. You get to see and especially with Joe Firestone, you get to see this in her stand up more as well. Um, I really like, love how see? she's like the trickster sort of part, or what do you see? I think that you see more of that. I think you see the trickster. Yeah. I think that's where it really is. It's like you see how clever she is. Yeah. Oh yeah. You see how she's biting. Like she has a really biting fucking wit, and it just comes out of her mouth. Um, and I really like the gleam in her eyes when oh, she yeah. says something biting because she's just like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> like you could just feel that in her soul. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I love that. Get him, Aparna. <laughs> and that was one of the reasons I like showing the bloopers is getting to see the, just like the stuff that mm -hmm. pops off her head immediately. When she's with, I've, so I've heard on Space Force, uh, we haven't seen this, but no. I've heard from people that they thought that the, the chemistry between her and Geth like stood out to them as people who did not know who Geth were or Aparna were, like stood out to them as like yeah. being incredible. Like they're like, oh no, they're great. Like they they had this great chemistry and they were the best. So I'm very excited to see them do that. Yeah. I think next we can actually um, remind you because Aparna has also been on a little show that uh, you might have heard of. I'm not sure. You might, you may be, um, maybe. It may be new to you, but uh, either way, this is a great clip from this show. And I think, I don't think I'm going to do a lot more intro to it because this is actually um, another series that she was in with Gethard. I'd like to apologize for my paperclip necklace real quick. I like thought it would be really cute, but it keeps shifting down to show that I am wearing a necklace held together by a bare paperclip. <laughs> okay, I found a description of uh, Charlie's body. <laughs> She had a good body, slim and tight, and long legs with breasts that might this have been is her favorite part of the book. Side, but were perky and well shaped, <laughs> and a well groomed strip of pubic hair in the usual place. Who's <laughs> <laughs> defending your boobs again? <laughs> you wanted to make sure you knew that it was in the right place. <laughs> 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 
Okay. <laughs> no, I, mean, I think you should read the rest of that. This was actually one of the quotes. Aparna and I are on the same page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was the rest of the quote? Um, it really, it's, uh, I called it the panty saga. <laughs> page 86. Uh, we're in the usual place. Is okay. This is like, okay, Robots is funny. I really like her. So in the usual place that it says his gaze didn't skip an inch of her. Carnal glint. It, this is when you first realize, oh, they're gonna fuck. And the carnal glint in his sky blue eyes as he looked sent a rush of alarmed adrenaline pumping through her veins. Smoke and Bob Doc he drawled. <laughs> Bad enough, this is my favorite sentence in the whole book. Bad enough that she was plagued by ghosts, but horny homicidal ghosts? <laughs> it was too much. I highly recommend the entire series. Like, truly, I highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah. So, You're yeah, I recommend the whole series. Um, you can hear, we talk about, we talk, we did a podcast. It's on about Audible. Yeah. That's where I listened to um, it. Uh, the whole series. The yeah. whole series. You can tell when uh, the book's about to end because about... You can tell when they're about to fuck because... Sorry. You can tell when she's about to get kidnapped by a serial killer because they always fuck one chapter before. Yeah. No, it's true. But <laughs> uh, I like skip over yeah, that Yeah, that was Hard Read, which is a great episode of CGP hosted by Leah yeah. Bonema. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a definite one that's a must-see if... Yeah. If you, Planet Scum is your introduction, Planet Scum Live is your introduction to everything that's going on. But I think next we should show, what should we show next? Why should we show some of her stand-up? I want to show some stand-up. Yeah, let's do Because the... there are some stories from her stand-up that I want to reference, and I'm not sure yeah. uh, which clip they come from. Let's do this one from Brick TV. Yeah, so this is a which... bit of a longer clip. Yeah, it's a longer clip, so you might want to settle yeah. in. Settle in, get your popping corn ready. We didn't. We don't have pop and corn no, no today. No pop and corn this time. For I told us. him no. We don't need pop and corn. And now I'm like, I should have told him we we should get some pop and corn. And this is from um, Brick TV, <laughs> which is all Brooklyn based. I think public access channel, nonprofit. So yeah. very sister station to Eminem in, in some ways, at least from the West Coast oh. perspective. And look so, who wants to here see. Here we go. Watch stand up with with Trash Cat. Trash Cat. This next comedian is amazing. She's been on Conan O'Brien and a bunch of other things. We're very happy to have her here. Please give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Aparna Nancherla. <laughs> Thank you, Aparna. Oh, I really like this one. Yeah, this yeah. is a really good one and has one of my favorite bits of hers. The place also looks like a place in San Francisco, so I like yeah. to pretend that I'm out watching comedy. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Uh, well, I hate to start my set off with a brag, but I'm going to do it. I, uh, I have some big personal news, uh, on the personal front. I, I surprised my boyfriend last night, uh, by letting him know I've been calling him my boyfriend. So <laughs> it's kind of a big step for us in our future together. Uh, he is a plant. So, um, he's pretty dependent on me, but I like to think of him as like a strong, silent type, you know, like I've almost killed him several times and he says nothing. He just takes it like a man <laughs> and he reminds me to drink more water. So it's like a give and take, uh, feel good about our future together. No, that's a, uh, you know, that's actually a joke. I, I might do a couple of those. I am... <laughs> I am recently still single. Uh, thank you. Feel the waves of fulfillment coming off of me. I, uh, yeah, I don't mind being single. I, I'm very busy leaning in, you know. It takes up, it takes up a lot of time. Uh, it's hard to meet people when you're that close to the ground. I'm very good. Very good. But sometimes, uh, this is a pet peeve I have. Sometimes as a single person in the city... Uh, you get stuck 
walking behind couples on the sidewalk and you try to get around them, but then you can't because their love is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just caught walking in the credits of their movie. <laughs> And then you just have to follow them home and become their child. It's a real hassle. I had plans. I had big plans. I had to water my boyfriend. I had a big night. I had a big night ahead. No, I have been following the signs in the universe, which is um, mainly that my friend's HBO Go password stopped working. Uh, so I am online dating again. Uh, Got to find a new host for my shows. But... I don't know, like I, I, I decided to try the online thing because meeting people in real life is too hard. Like if I walk into a bar, the main vibe I'm putting out there is kind of like, are you my mother? Like that, that's my gift to the universe. Thank you for acknowledging it. So I was like, I'll try the internet, you know? Like that, does, that has bad odds, so I got a good shot. Uh, and so I joined that website, OK Cupid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't brave enough for Tinder. I don't know. I don't like I don't like that site because it feels like it's too close to home. Like it feels like the person is right behind you. You're like, don't, don't, don't swipe me. <laughs> Where are you? But anyway, I wanted to share a few messages I've gotten on the site. I feel like um it is my job as a citizen to share these. Uh and if you're in a relationship right now, you can be like, oh, better get out. Market's hot. <laughs> Everybody's on there. I want a piece of the pie. Okay, here's the first one. Hi, we should meet up. We are both Indian and live in NYC. That is a good reason to meet up. <laughs> Whoa. Slow down with the charm, buddy. <laughs> You're like a poet of census information. <laughs> Getting me all cold and bothered. <laughs> Mostly bothered. <laughs> okay, here's the next one. Very funny lady, we should create a show together. Okay, slow down, LinkedIn. You know, this isn't a networking site. But I was like, well, this guy does have goals. Let's see what he has to say. And then he writes, also, I like your orgasmic eyes. <laughs> what? I thought we were in a business meeting. <laughs> also, orgasmic eyes. I feel like that adjective is a compliment. But can we keep that word away from my face? <laughs> 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 like what about my knees or near my feet or trash can in a third location <laughs> <laughs> and then he ends strong with do you like slurpees <laughs> aside from the probable racism uh, there's always a satellite delay on that people are like oh we just thought he was random but he's also a monster, so <laughs> take, that, take that into account for you marry him. Uh, you guys know what nagging is? Nagging? Okay, great, that's enough. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's basically like when you insult someone, usually a woman, in order to confuse her into liking you. So like if you told a girl she had a weird mouth, she'd be like, I do have a weird mouth. Ooh, what are you about? Like, that is how a neg is supposed to work. It's supposed to be like, I feel terrible. Hold me, you know? Uh, but anyway, I just want to assure you they're a real thing. You two could be a lucky winner. Uh, here are just a couple of those I've gotten. First one. Hey, you look batshit crazy with those wild staring eyes. I was like, oh, I thought they were orgasmic, you know? <laughs> Quickly things change. Also, I have a pretty normal profile picture, but I like that this guy was just like, nope, that's a National Geographic cover if I ever saw one. <laughs> pretty sure that was June's feature on Spinster's 
Gone Wild. <laughs> a must read. This one's kind of weird. Have you ever fantasized about a younger guy? What? Am I 85 now? <laughs> I was like, your photo better be an ultrasound image. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to accept the implications of what you're saying. Hey, he adds, you might be out of reach, but not from the imagination. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Like, oh, so you're in jail. It's probably not going to work out. Wow. Ooh, probably not going to work Ooh. out. Uh, this one needs no intro. Hi, I like hairy Indian women. You look nice. <laughs> Finally, someone who sees me for me. <laughs> he said he wasn't out there. Uh, and I did want to share uh, also the best OK Cupid message I've ever gotten. I had to draw it. Uh, you'll see why. OK, here it is. Hi there. <laughs> Hi there, frowny face. Uh, short to the point. He knows what he wants. He knows what he doesn't want. But then he clarified just seconds later with this, I mean smiley face. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice save, bro. For a second, I thought you hated me. Uh, so glad we cleared that up. I sat with that for a few seconds or days, as you would, and I can't. I came to the conclusion that this is actually a perfect metaphor for dating online, if you think about it. It's like, it's, a, it's, it's great. It's like, hi there, hey, how's it going? This is literally the worst thing I've ever done <laughs> in my entire life. Uh, to put up a forced, cropped, candid photo of myself, probably <laughs> taken, let's be honest, five to seven years ago. <laughs> and a couple of hobbies and bands to seem both interesting and mysterious at the same time. All the while knowing that if not immediately, then, you know, after like 2.3 dates or, hey, if we're lucky, like 17 years down the line, uh, we'll inevitably disappoint each other when we face the fact we knew all along, uh, we're all essentially alone. <laughs> I mean, yay! <laughs> Let's go on a tapas group on. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun. YOLO, it's a free site. <laughs> anyway, you know, pretty deep message. Like, clearly this guy had layers. And you know, I totally would have written him back. But he also had weird bangs. I was like, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that in my life. I, I've i been traveling more for comedy. It's exciting. I took the subway here. I feel like that counts. Uh, I changed lines. I really grew as a person. I I don't know. Like, I, It's kind of cool. Comedy has taken me to some places I've never been in the past year. Like, I went to Dubai for the first time. Has anyone been to Dubai? Is anyone there right now? Great. Uh, if you if you haven't been, to me, it feels like what happens when a space station and a shopping mall love each other very, very much. <laughs> like, that's how you make a Dubai if you wanted your own. But I was just passing through there. I was going to Australia to do a couple comedy shows. And Australia is the farthest I've ever traveled for anything. Like, the plane ride to get there was so long. That halfway through, I just started putting my hand up to the window and thinking about the life I left behind. <laughs> like I just went into PBS documentary immigrant mode. <laughs> and I was just like, Papa! <laughs> I don't even know a Papa. Like grabbed this woman's baby. I was just like, the fever will pass. <laughs> really committed. It was kind of her fault for having her baby out. You know, pretty sure you're supposed to store them in the overhead bin <laughs> for international flights. Well, it's going to Australia, you go through customs, you fill out a little card to explain why you're there, and they have a line to put your occupation down. I put comedian, 
like a dummy. <laughs> because then when I was going in, the customs official looked at it, and then he looked at me, and he was just like, you're a comedian? I was like, great, my first heckle, I'm not even in the country. <laughs> this is going so well. And then I didn't know what to say. Like, I didn't even know what day it was at that point. So I was just like, yeah, I guess I am. Like, we were both disappointed. <laughs> I was like, that is my handwriting. Facts are facts. I, uh, I live in New York right now. Uh, any New York heads in the house? <laughs> Great. Awesome. I don't know. I've, I've lived here for a little over two years. I've grown to love it in a lot of ways. You know, it's a great city if you're into struggle. Uh, doing amazing things with trash, really reinventing the form. But I was trying to explain to a friend what it's like to live here. And to me, it feels like everyone in this city is just an involuntary contestant in a reality show called so you think you can exist <laughs> <laughs> and then every day you just stick your head out of a little box you are assigned and the city just like hurls experiences at your face and it's just like you're gonna break today is today the day you're gonna move <laughs> what's gonna tip it is it gonna be the pigeon with the lazy eye <laughs> Or the homeless man, we have to explain what a mortgage is to you. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be? Feels like every day at the end of the day in New York, someone is told, please pack your dreams and go. And they're totally fine with it. Like, I'd rather be on a mega bus. Get me out of here. <laughs> My friend is looking for an apartment here right now. And she told me the worst real estate story I've ever heard. She was looking at a place in Bushwick. Uh, yeah, a moment of silence for Bushwick. And uh, she looked at a place where the landlord on the tour just said very casually, oh, by the way, you're not allowed to poop in the toilet. <laughs> what? <laughs> and my friend is a human. <laughs> so she was just like, well, how am I supposed to poop? Which I think is a really smart response in that scenario. And she was bringing her A-game. <laughs> and the landlord just said, very matter-of-factly, oh, you poop in a paper towel and you put it in the dumpster. What? <laughs> like a well-trained monster. <laughs> like her eyes should have just started bleeding at that point and she should have just flown out the window. Like that would have been the only logical <laughs> follow-up to that statement. <laughs> The worst part of the story is, is it was a $3,000 apartment. <laughs> it wasn't like a Craigslist apocalypse scenario. Like, whoever wants it, come squat here. <laughs> like, clearly no one's allowed to squat there in any sense of the word. <laughs> I just like that that's the new state of housing here. It's not like, oh, yeah, maybe we should take a second look at our plumbing. It's like, oh no, our building is poop free. <laughs> you still poop? <laughs> you haven't had your organs removed? <laughs> That's the newest surgery, just going empty. <laughs> Being technically dead. That's what the rich are into now. Uh, people talk about New York moments. I think there should be a separate category called New York breaking points. Uh, I had mine a couple months ago. I, I was walking in Manhattan and I just saw a loose muffin that had fallen on the sidewalk and I just kicked it really hard. I was like, I didn't know that about myself. <laughs> I didn't know I was a muffin kicker. It's like a new truth I have to wrap into my identity. Like the top shot off in one direction, the body kept rolling. I was like, sick! Oh. Children, look away! <laughs> if you see something, say something. What if it's you? What if it's you? All right, thank you guys so much. Thanks a lot. So that was... 
Aparna on Brick. Which is uh, Brooklyn cu- Public Access, yes. correct? Yes. It's uh, And it was from the show Stand Up Brooklyn, which was hosted by Greg Johnson and showcased the city's some of the city's hottest emerging comics. At a bar called Splitty. At Splitty. Good old Splitty. Gold, good old Splitty. Yeah, Brick is an arts and media nonprofit in downtown Brooklyn, NY. <laughs> WNY. Thought, thought it was NYS, but no, it's the See. city, not the state. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love it. I love seeing that and seeing some of the bloopers and stuff from Womanhood because you get to see that Aparna is just mm-hmm. that sharp, both off the top of her head and in terms of her writing. Mm-hmm. And so I think, I, like you were saying earlier, it gets a good. It's a good look at her breadth her as a breadth. performer. Her breadth as a performer. Her breadth. Need water, I guess. I need water. My breath is leaving me. <laughs> I have no more breath. Um. So what are we? What are we gonna watch next, Forrest? So that one was from 2016, and I thought it could be good to view uh, some of her more recent stand up, actually, as yeah. well. Um. So you can see sort of her her current work. Yeah. Development and over four years. Which one was that? I think that was this that one. That was that one. That was that one. Buckle up, friends. Yes, that was this one, which is live from here with Chris Teal. 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 I think Teal. Uh, and and it's it's cool to see her more recent work, as I as I said. So instead of repeating myself again, here's the here's the stand up. Town Hall, how's it going? Happy fall. Fall is one of my favorite seasons. It is a season of change. I've also already had a year that's pretty full of change. I moved in with my boyfriend this spring. Uh, Thank you for those of you who clapped. For those of you who didn't, it is too soon to know if it'll take, so you're (laughs) also right. Uh, Yes, I moved in with my boyfriend at the end of March. Um, I myself was impressed. It is the most work I've ever put into an April Fool's prank. Uh, (laughs) So I was impressed by my level of commitment there. I don't know. Has anyone moved in the history of time and just thought, you know what? I have the exact right amount of stuff. It's perfect. Like I fit and so do my things and I'm a Tetris god. Like... I don't know how you guys pack. The way I do it, I just throw everything I own onto the floor, and then I go, who am I? (laughs) Sort of my process. Uh Oh, yeah. (laughs) But when I was packing, I was like, okay, well, you're definitely a hoarder. It's no longer a question. You know, (laughs) scientists can move on to their next project, but uh, I'm a low-level hoarder right now. Like, I I wouldn't qualify for the show Hoarders yet, but if there was a show called Junior Hoarders, I think I would be in serious contention um and not just because i present like an anxious child but also just because of the potential i have in the field (laughs) when i I was packing uh i i discovered that my equivalent of feral cats as an aspiring hoarder it turns out is tote bags Mm. um yeah i'm in possession Mm -hmm. yes i see there's some other toadies in the room This city is rife with them. I did a show in Brooklyn the other night. The audience was sitting in tote bags. (laughs) I do feel like we have chosen our team. New York has. But yeah, I don't know if we, I just have some kind of public radio fundraising fetish that I have not resolved (laughs) in myself. That's the only way I can explain how many I've accumulated Kind of the worst part is that each tote bag is just stuffed to the brim with more tote bags. <laughs> <laughs> it's truly disgusting. It's like they're all about to give birth to like a co-op or something. I kind of want to mail them all in one bulk shipment to Marie Kondo. Just, just like an overexcited fan who doesn't really understand her work. <laughs> It's like, Marie, I saw the bags. I thought of you. (laughs) I got no more things. I'm a good girl. 
Yeah, for uh, for the most part, moving has been going good. I've uh, been spending a lot of weekends at Bed Bath and Beyond, just seeking those space saving solutions in my life. One of the best purchases my boyfriend and I made, we got these two wicker cubes that we go in at the end of the night, um, <laughs> just so we can put ourselves away. <laughs> We've learned that we're the main problem with the generation of filth, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, other than that, I can't complain. My life has been going pretty good. My career has been chugging along steadily. I uh, I have a Wikipedia page, you know, I can't, things are going all right. It's finally something to pass down to my children. But, you know, I've done stand-up on TV a handful of times. I've acted in a few things. I'm not famous by any stretch of the imagination, but occasionally when I'm out and about in the city, someone will be like, hey, are you? And I'll go, it's me and you know that'll be a nice moment for both of us <laughs> but for the most part pretty weird level of knownness um the best way i can explain it i was at a coffee shop recently you know i drink it too and um <laughs> i went to the barista i gave her my order she asked for my name i said oh it's a parna and she was like oh like that comedian and I was like, yes, like that comedian. What game are you playing? Because, <laughs> you know, it's good because it seems like maybe my work is more out there than it was, but just not necessarily my voice or face. And that's <laughs> fine. That is definitely a stage to be at. <laughs> Everyone is so worried about their privacy these days. And I think mine is holding strong. <laughs> everyone's like oh parna yeah she's more of an idea you know you can't you can't really pin her down into a physical form just, just curb that sweet of parna magic i did i did get recognized recently but because it's new york like even that you know people are so busy even that was pretty brisk i was sitting in a different coffee shop uh i'm a private investigator's dream um, you know, just follow the latte art, you'll find me. <laughs> but I was sitting there having a drink. This woman comes in on her cell phone. She's just deep in her conversation. She passes my table. She kind of gives me a double take and then just grabs my elbow and she goes, you're very funny. And I was like, oh, thank you. You know, it kind of caught me off guard. And then she just goes, no, you're very funny. <laughs> and I was like, are we fighting? <laughs> <laughs> And then she doesn't even stop. She just keeps walking. And then I just hear her say into her phone in the distance, she just goes, no, not you. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, so many casualties in that drive-by compliment. <laughs> no survivors. Like, I know on the surface I should feel good, but really I just wanted to call up my therapist and be like, well, there's been another incident. I'm going to need you to meet me here on my cross streets. I've been having so many human encounters. I don't know. It's New York. You know, it's mostly people. If you look around, it's a lot of eyes. But I had, I had kind of a religious experience recently, but not in the traditional sense. Like, I, I took a lift. Um, that's it. The gig economy just awoke me. No, I, I took a lift and my, my driver had like a classically Muslim name. He was wearing a Muslim head covering. That's important. I got in the car, you know, we had been driving maybe a couple minutes. We were passing through a Hasidic neighborhood and then just out of nowhere, he goes, you know what I think of the Jews? Yeah, I know. You know, historically, not a great way to start small talk. Uh, <laughs> but I am already a socially anxious person. So as soon as I heard the intake of breath that indicated he was about to start a conversation, I was already like, oh, no. <laughs> and then after he said that, I was like, do I open the door and roll out? You know, <laughs> Like, is this one of those hidden camera shows where they measure your character? I, I don't <laughs> really know what my options are. But then I thought through it a little more, and I was like, you know, you are a comedian. Anecdotes pay the bills. You got to see this through. <laughs> so 
so you know i i just go no what do you think about the dude <laughs> you know like it was a set up to some classic old joke and then like he had studied dramatic timing he just waits a beat and then he just goes wonderful people i love them <laughs> And then he just raves about all the Jewish people he's known in his life, just like a highlight reel. <laughs> At this point, I'm just emotionally, like total emotional whiplash in the back seat. You know, I was like laughing and crying at the same time. You know, the emoji, uh, like, <laughs> I, I had barely recovered from that when he goes into his next point, which is that he just goes, you know, all religions, they're the same. Like, we're all just trying to get into Manhattan, and we're taking different bridges. Some of us, <laughs> you know, some of us take the Williamsburg Bridge, and some of us take the Pulaski Bridge, and some of us take the Triborough Bridge, but we're all just trying to get into the city. And, you know, I'm reeling at this point. I was like, this is incredible. I thought I was dealing with a low-key bigot. But <laughs> now I'm like, maybe this man should start a podcast. You know, it's just truly the full range of human experience. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes into his third and final point. You know, he had three points. He knew how to be an effective speaker. Uh <laughs> which was just he, he was like you know religions what does it matter we're all humans like we're all the same we're all born and we're all gonna die and then he kind of got stuck on that last point like he just kept being like we're all gonna die just very joyfully and that didn't quite feel like the right thing to keep <laughs> chanting over and over <laughs> in a ride share so <laughs> i did have to tell him to cool it at that point but it is the only time I've given a driver 17 stars. And <laughs> oh. In the little comment section, I just wrote profit question mark. Oh. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of the I love that set so much. You know what I think about the Jews? No. What are you thinking about? <laughs> Wonderful uh, people. Uh, 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 I, I was I was gonna try and like put a Toydarian joke in there, but I, I wasn't clever enough. And I'm like, I'm not gonna yeah. make everyone sit here and That's wait fair. for me to not come up with a joke. Uh, I apologize again, also for my paperclip necklace. Uh, we're going real high fashion here for Aparna. Um, I think that's that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Like, I think my favorite story of hers is. Uh, <laughs> yes, always leave your children with Watto. <laughs> they'll uh, they'll learn something. They'll learn valuable life <laughs> skills, like spinning and pottery skills. skills. Um, I think that's one of my favorite ones. I think yeah. I just I can't the image in my head of the woman walking by and grabbing her yeah. elbow. I just feel like she makes this like perfect movie picture. Yeah, <laughs> I can just see it in my head. Well, and, and I also think that that clip especially really indicates, helps show, I think, why her and Gethard would have such good chemistry mm -hmm. is because they both, both of them have a... They have a hard time accepting compliments, but they're also like very, as professionals, like they think a lot about yeah. their place. And both have a similar style in storytelling and mm -hmm. a similar skill yeah. at weaving punchlines naturally yeah. into a story where it doesn't even, it doesn't even... Mm -hmm. always feel like they're doing a story and then joke and then story and then joke. It's just this like effortless seeming yeah. uh, uh, weaving them in. And mm -hmm. so I like that a lot uh, in both of their comedy. I like that too. Um, If you want to see, uh, I don't know that we should play this one now, no. but Comedy Central, was yes. it? Did one of those things where it they take above a- average but, through uh, Comedy Central. Where they take a comedian's story and they they like animate it essentially, uh, but this one it's live action. Um, so definitely check that yeah, out that... if you like that because she is actually a fantastic enough storyteller, and I think probably because Above Average was doing it that yeah. they edit it, it. It's like still really nice. Like the editing is excellent, uh, and it feels like a coherent story. And uh, that was uh, that video is a part of Ontario's well most high octane New York moment story time because it's yeah. part of the story time series. And Gethard has one about road rage as well. Um, but I do think that's something we have time for. Yeah. 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 So this one's really good. It's through Girls Who Code, which has a surprising amount of comedy content that yeah. we've encountered through. That's actually really true. Because there was also 
the sketch that the sketch was it Pegram? Yeah, I think it was Rachel Pegram. It was Pegram. Rachel Pegram, and it was about uh, building a robot and mm -hmm. sexism in tech. Yeah. Um, and so this is. Also, just really good. Yeah, um, we just want to leave you with this little uh, feeling real nice. Uh, help you kind of chill out and, chill and get out, into the zone. Tune start in vibing before, before pre-show. Yeah, start vibing before the pre-show. Uh, Here we go. Here we go. Hi, I'm Aparna, and this is ASMR Activism, a series about how to harness the infinite power of ASMR and channel it towards activism. <clears throat> specifically your activism. <laughs> Today's tutorial is about how to increase your own awareness and how to increase the awareness of those around you. There are lots of great resources out there. There are a ton of awesome podcasts and daily newsletters like the Washington Post Daily 202, which organizes information in a way that might be less overwhelming than scrolling through your news feed for 24 hours a day. Breaking news. Tweet, tweet. Aunt Carol has sent you an article post. News, news, news. Try talking to people whose opinions might be different than yours in a way that's safe for you both physically and emotionally. Don't worry about wasting your time talking to hateful <laughs> dumbasses who won't listen to you. You're wrong. <laughs> Stupid. Ugh. No. Most importantly, cut yourself some slack. There's no way to know everything. Figure out what you're passionate about. And read that. You don't have to consume everything. <laughs> or know everything. You still have to go live your life, so go live it. This has been ASMR Activism. I'll see you. And you'll hear me. <laughs> next time. <laughs> Do you do you ASMR Forest? No. No. I, I also do not ASMR. Oh, there's there's Mitra Mitra Djibouti, right? No, Mitra Juhari. Jahari. I definitely kind of Mitra stumbled Jahari. into comedy. She's a, a three she's a three busy Debra. Yes, yeah, she's, she's one, one of the, of the Debras. Debras. So she was a Meta, also worked on that series. And yeah, it's just really good. Yeah. Um and there apparently it was connected to an album ca also called Sisterhood, which yeah. featured Appearances from Little Miss Flint, Cecile Richards, Aparna Nancherla, Sashir Zameda, Girls Who Code alumni, and more. Yeah. Um, and then the video that started to play, I don't think we have time no. for, but it's a really good interview mm -hmm. with <clears throat> with Aparna that you should check out. Yeah. And that one is called is, is for Quartz, and it's how depression led to stand up comedy, and it it's a really insightful look into her comedy. If you put it on right now, we will have time, however, okay. to watch Model Minorities. Yes, we will have time for Model Minorities. So we are going to play for you. We're going to well, play us out on Model we'll Minorities. We'll at least be able to play part of Model Minorities. We may run out of time if, because it's we a little We have to start over. it right now. We need to start it right over. now. We will end one minute before you all need to sign off and go to the Discord for the pre-show. Uh, thank you all so much. It's been so much fun with uh, the Arcturus guy. And Kyle, Welcome. I'm and Zero, purple and hat. much like Naomi Campbell, I am a model minority. <laughs> it's not easy being a minority in America, and I'm going to make it harder by pitting myself against an Asian woman. Please welcome Aparna Nancherla. Yay! Hi! Hi! Hi, Hi Are Indians the Black people of Asians? You want a sound bite? Yeah, I want a sound bite. Do you want me to say Indian people are the black people of Asia? Please, just the camera. I can't. <laughs> no? I can't say it. Wow, okay. I mean, I did. I was hoping you caught it then. Well, okay, but... we'll just, we'll recut that. The editing is okay. magic. Editing is okay. magic. Okay. Editing is magic. Editing is magic. Editing is magic. I hate Indian people. Filipino people. <laughs> Indian people. <laughs> White women. Malaysians. <laughs> Model minorities. Science. Some of your Eastern <laughs> Asians. <laughs> Indian and African immigrant parents. Black people. <laughs> I love racism. <laughs> I have this next segment, and we're going to talk about a group of people, and you tell me if they're model minorities or not. Okay. Is this person a model minority? Yes. Tiger Woods? He's a model minority for golf, 
and adultery. Wow. Yeah. I think if you win anything with the word master in it and you're a minority, you're winning. That logic is sound. Baited. Not. Uh, Tyson Beckett. Yeah, model. Yeah, he's hot. Not baited. OJ Simpson, is he a model minority? I'm going to say no. He's a minority. Yeah, but he hasn't modeled, has he? Unbeatable. <laughs> yes, Tooth Dwayne Fairy. Ma yeah, he's great. These are all good. Here's my controversial stance. Oh, okay. I think of The Rock not even as a human person. You're dehumanizing yeah. this person of color. I think he's better than people. Master debater. Okay, Aparna, you are very hard to bait. <laughs> And I have the perfect game to trap you in something salacious. Thank you. Even when I'm being mean, she's polite. <laughs> We're gonna play a game of heads up. Okay. I will put a name on my hand and you have to make an accent and I'll guess who you're impersonating. Okay. Who am I? Um, oh man. Yeah, do an accent. Go. I am one with the universe. Do an accent. I am an enlightened being. Do an accent. <laughs> I've written a lot of self-help books. Do an oh, accent. I did. That's not an accent. I settled. He's lived here a long time. Okay, do you have Chopra? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, I would never do this. Uh, he plays basketball and he's an Asian man. Do the accent. No, I'm not going to do the accent, Aparna. Do the accent. No. The accent. No. Yao Ming. No. Jeremy Lin. Yes. <laughs> not dated. Oh, this person doesn't have an accent because he's an old school person. He so definitely had an accent. He had an accent, but I don't, he doesn't, there's no recorded tape of him. Just do a different accent. Okay. Lucky chops, but not that, but for pillaging villages and raping people. Genghis Khan? Yeah. Ah! Not dated. Oh, um, The Apprentice. Amorosa. Yeah. You didn't do an accent. I don't even know. Can I can't Am think Am of what her voice I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to make friends. That was kind of racist, though. That movement? Oh, I did do yeah, that was racial. Didn't I? That was very racial. Baited. Maybe? Okay. Oh, <laughs> wears a lot of robes. The Pope? Close. Lateral move. <laughs> DJ Khaled? <laughs> <laughs> he wears robes. He's, he's Miami's Pope, if you think about it. See, we you know this. We trained for this. Okay. No! Oh. <laughs> Dalai Lama. <laughs> I looked at it. <laughs> Okay, this one's easy. It's okr. What? Okr. 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 I don't think I know it. Okr. Okr. No. Please try. What are you doing? Okr. Like her, but okr. I don't get it. She's so good. From your familiar faces. Oh. Born out. Okra. Okr. Okr. I think I need a voice coach. <laughs> I just love how this was edited. Right? <laughs> like, it's it's so well done. Oh yeah, no, the editing is amazing. <laughs> on this. And that was the show. Aparna, you were impossible to bait. Thank you. That's not a compliment. <clears throat> I think it's ironic that the model minority was perfect. I will not be put in a box. Could you say one, just before we go, one thing that'll make people go, wow. Black Lives Matter. And that's the show. This is Aparna Nancherla. Let's see who did the editing before we all go yeah. for the pre-show. Oh, Jackie, Jackie Jennings, Jennings directed. Jackie Jennings directed it. Aparna. Aparna. Oh, Corey Dome. Oh, good job, Corey Dome. Fuck. So yeah, that's Corey the show. And, uh, uh, that's our show. There's more, but go watch, go, go listen to the pre-show. to the pre-show. Uh, the show is about to show. The pre-show is about to pre-show. And, and then, then the it'll shows, be the post-show. We'll post-show. We'll post-show. And then... Your life continues. It'll be tomorrow. For your, In the East Coast. It'll be here today in California yeah. where we are. But the pre-show is on now. Go watch the pre-show. Yay, go, go watch the pre-show. Pre Thank you so Goodbye. much. Uh, have a good time. Good night and good clown Good friends. night and good clowns.